Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back with another C++ lesson, and I'm here with my son, Alex. How's it going, Alex? Hey, guys. Happy Sunday. Yes, happy Sunday. And uh, Sundays, most people take off, but we're not taking off. We're <laughs> ready for some C++. We're ready for some coding. So, uh, so we're going to jump right into it. And we have a very exciting and hopefully lightweight lesson for today. So... I'm going to start you off from here. And today we're going to talk about uh, switch statements. So switch statements are a lot of fun and they're very similar to if statements. And uh, we're going to discuss uh, what the differences are. So in this overview, we will give you a high level overview of what a switch statement is. I'll give you some coding concepts, show you how the syntax works. And then we'll do a practical walkthrough. So what is a switch statement? So a more technical defini definition would be uh, a switch statement is something that performs actions depending on the state of a variable. So if you remember uh, in our last tutorial, we had an enum class and we had certain states, like we had a power on and we had a power off. So a switch statement can be used in conjunction with an enum to do actions depending on what the state of that enum is. So it's very similar to an if statement, uh, but can be more efficient. Okay, and I'll show you how. And this is used in conjunction with an int, an enum class, or an enum. I don't think that you can use a switch with anything else except for these three things. Hmm. So now let's talk about coding concepts. So just to review, we have this enum class that we did last lesson where we have this power. We have two states. We have a power on and a power off. And let's see how this is actually used in a um, in conjunction with a switch. So we're, we have int main. Uh, we have a power object that we've created. And we've sweat, set the default to power off. Uh, we create this. So we have this made up class that we've created called lights. Let's pretend that we're um, controlling light switches, and then we can switch lights on or off. So these are this is maybe our light class. And now we start by declaring the keyword switch. And then what we need to do is put the enum in parentheses. So in this case, power is what, uh, what we're doing. So this is, once again, similar to an if statement, except it's a little bit different. So we have our opening brace. Then instead of saying if power is off, we can say case power off. And notice that we have a colon after off uh, rather than a semicolon. And in this case, we could just call, let's say that our light class had this function called lights.switchoff. Uh, we would say, okay, if power is off, then lights.switchoff. And then we have this, uh, this break keyword. So you mentioned before the call that you remember breaks, uh, this keyword break can break out of a loop if something happens. So this is very much the same case here. Uh, what happens is that if you go into the switch statement and that the power is off, it'll, do, it'll perform lights, lights switch off, and then it'll call break, which means that it doesn't need to need to evaluate any of the other conditions that are beneath this, okay? And that's how it could be more efficient than an if statement because uh, with an if statement, it will evaluate for all conditions unless you call some sort of break that'll break out of the other conditions. Okay, so, so yeah, go ahead. So like, so if we have um, an if statement, let's say we have a number and we say, is the number equal to five? If the number isn't equal to five, then it moves on to the next condition. Is it equal to six? You know, so far, that you're saying that doesn't happen with case. If it's not, or if it meets a certain condition, then it just immediately skips over everything. If it meets a con if it meets the condition, and then you call break after you've done everything you need to do in that case, then it will not evaluate for any of the other conditions. That's correct. And it, does the uh, the colon have any functional difference on 
a base level or is it just like a, a syntax kind of thing? It's a, it's just a syntax thing. And I think it's just <clears throat> saying, you know, it's kind of like if the power is off, then do everything that's inside of that. Mm. And notice, notice also the indentation that I'm using. Okay. So the indentation has to be like that. Um, so another one that we have is case power on. And once again, light stuff switch on. Uh, so it would switch the lights on and break. So what would happen is if, if uh, our power state was in power on, then it would evaluate for power off and say, no, that's not it. Then it go to power on and then it do light stop switch on and then it would break out of this, meaning it would not evaluate for any other uh, potential states in this, uh, in this switch statement. And you so it only breaks if it's actually applicable. So it won't break if it doesn't meet the condition. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. And then you close out and that's it. So that's really, that's really all there is to it. You can also, there's also a default state that you can do, and I'll show you how to do that uh, very shortly. So, so let's go ahead and just open our IDE. So let's open Xcode. And here we are. So let's just do, let's just do our, uh, what we just did before here. So we have this uh, enum class power. Let's do another one, right? So let's say game state. I love game state. Oh. Uh, yeah, so quick question. In the presentation um, on the last slide, you had int main, and then on the second bracket, you had a, col a semicolon after that. Was that intentional or was that just a mistake? Say that again. Yeah. So on the presentation, um, there is a, a colon, a semicolon after. Yeah, right there on int main, that last bracket. Oh, that is a mistake, actually. Yeah. Good catch. Yeah. Nice just one. Make it, just making sure. Yeah. Good catch. See, I'll put those there just to see if you catch me or not. <laughs> so, uh, so we have this uh, game over. So we have this enum class that's called game state, and uh, we have three we have three states: menu, playing, and game over. So now, once again, we need to create a game state object. So we will initialize it to menu. And then we can call this switch statement. And it has this nice little autocomplete that it does for us if it's nice, if it's mm -hmm. kind to us. So in the switch, we put the expression. So what it, do you know what we put in the expression, Alex? Um, so is it game state? Yep, with a capital or lowercase? Uh, I believe it'd be the lowercase. Yeah, exactly. Because it's evaluating the game state object, not the game state class. Right. Okay. okay. Then in this constant, what do you think we would put here? Um, well, I guess it depends on what you're trying to actually, uh, what the condition you want to be is. So yeah. menu in this case. Okay, so yeah, great. So we can do game state menu. And then in here we would have, we don't really have any sort of logic, but we would, we could say uh, show menu screen, uh, load player profile, maybe something sure. like that. And then we have break. And now we can do a case, and then we go back to the next state, which would be game state playing. Playing, yeah. And once again, it's a colon, not a semicolon there. And then this would be something like create players, create enemies, load game, um, 
load playing logic, maybe something like that. Then once again, we would call break. So, so it seems like the um, the benefit, the main benefit of of switch as opposed to an if statement was the aforementioned efficiency. Is that really the biggest benefit? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that's really the biggest. That's really the biggest benefit. Uh, you know, like if you do if you do this one, then I find that it reads a lot nicer. So yeah. it's more efficient. And I find that it also just reads really cleanly. Uh, it's a lot more readable. So, uh, so here we have like display, uh, game over screen, uh, option to reload. And then we, as I, as I mentioned to you before, uh, we have this default state. So this is just in case we have some, for some reason we have game state running into some other, uh, some other state that, um, that isn't involved, that isn't one of these three states, but sometimes you can make it just a, uh, just like default behavior. Uh, so maybe it would be like show menu screen or it could be something like uh, display error message. So I, I don't, I don't quite recall, but um, the, when we, when we did enums uh, I believe I asked if, if the first state was the default state. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't remember if, the, if that was a yes or a no. Yes, I believe it. Uh, yes, I believe it is. Um, so let's so let's take a let's take a look. Let's find out, right? So it's always it's always best practice to give your enum a good. So so see, we get a warning here. Variable game mm. state is uninitialized when used here. Okay, so I guess it's still technically be, compile. It would compile. Um, so let's see. Let's see if it just defaults to. Um, to the first state. Hmm. I don't know if it would be if it if it would just yeah. So so we can see that um, it doesn't do anything actually. So that would be undefined hmm. undefined behavior. So you don't know what it's going to do. Weird. Yeah. So there you go. So that's how, that's how you do, um, that's how you use a switch statement. So to me, that looks much better than something like this. Uh, so you'd have to do if game state is equal to game state menu, do stuff, else if mm, yeah. state. So you so you see how how much cleaner that looks already. Yeah, you're right. That's actually really practical. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, these things get you know much more complicated than this. So oh, yeah, I bet. So yeah, you get the idea. Much much uh much cleaner to use a switch you can also use a, a switch with a um with an, an int as well so let's let's try that out right so let's let's just get rid of all this this can be kind of helpful as well this will test my basic c plus plus skills here so let's do <laughs> Let's do something like int input equals minus one. So um, we'll give a default of minus one, and then we will say while um, input not equal to zero, uh, let's do std c out, please enter a number uh, then stood C in uh, input and then we 
could do switch here. So switch input. And then we can say case. We'll just do like something very simple here. So case zero, we'll do another stud C out. You have nothing. And sometimes I like to copy all of these like this. And you can say case one, you have only one. Okay. And then the default will be Um, you shouldn't be here. Let's make like a case nine, so something like that. And we'll say something like, uh, you have exited. And what we'll do is we will say, while input is not equal to nine. So I think, I think I've done all that right. So let's see if this works. So please enter a number. So we enter zero, you have nothing. If I enter one, you have only one. Uh, so let's try four. Uh, you shouldn't be here. And then if we enter nine, then we've uh, we've exited out and uh, oh. got out the while loop. So default's kind of like a, an else. If none of the conditions are met, it it's like that it defaults back to something. Yeah, that's correct. So 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 we have this while, and we're saying while the input isn't nine then what'll happen is that you run you run back into you run back into this loop so luckily cn uh, actually pauses the executions and waits for you to give it a, an input before it moves on and then it evaluates the input and determines what to do next so based on you having to put the while input is an equal to 9 uh, the implication here is that when you do a case, it's only, it can only be a static condition. It can't be a relative condition, meaning that you can't have input, you know, a case input is less than five or case input is less than whatever number. It has to be a very specific condition. That's correct. Yeah. So, so yeah, I don't think that you could, um, I don't think that you could do anything like that. I, I, I don't, uh, so let's let's try it, right? I don't think that'll work. So, so it would be have to be something like input is less than five. I've never tried that. That would be very interesting, though. Yeah, see, not a constant, not a constant mm -hmm. expression. Yeah. Yes, it has to be defined. Yeah. Any other questions about that? No, I, I think that's it. Seems pretty simple. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? That, yeah, that's. I might actually be able to use that for a program I'm working on right now. Nice. Cool. That's where we conclude our lesson. And uh, if you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, we will see you next time. And we're going to start talking about some real exciting stuff. Was not exciting before. Even more exciting. <laughs> All right. See ya. Peace.